So in the early 70s, Ed Whitchurch ran his game, and one of the participants was Eric Sorensen. Eric plays something like a computer. When he games, he methodically considers each possibility before choosing his preferred option. If given time, he will invariably pick the optimal solution. It has been known to take weeks. He is otherwise, in all respects, a superior gamer. Eric was playing a neutral paladin in Ed's game. He was on some lord's land when the following exchange occurs. Ed, you see a well-groomed garden. In the middle, on a small hill, you see a gazebo. A uh, gazebo? What color is it? It's white, Eric. Uh, how far away is it? It's about 50 yards. And how big is it? It's about 30 feet across, 15 feet high, with a pointed top. I use my sword to detect good on it. It's not good, Eric. It's a gazebo. I call out to it. <laughs> it won't answer. It's a gazebo. Sheath my sword and draw my bow and arrows. Does it respond in any way? No, Eric. It's a gazebo. I shoot it with my bow. He rolls to hit. What happened? There is now a gazebo with an arrow sticking out of it. Wasn't it wounded? Of course not, Eric. It's a gazebo. But that was a plus three arrow. <laughs> It's a gazebo, Eric, a gazebo. If you really want to try and destroy it, you could chop it with an axe, I suppose, or you could try and burn it. But I don't know why anybody would even try. It's a fucking gazebo. Long pause. He has no axe or fire spells. I run away. No, it's too late. You've awakened the gazebo. It catches you and eats you. Eric, reaching for his dice. Maybe I'll roll up a fire using mage so I can avenge my paladin. At this point, the increasingly amused fellow party members restored a modicum of order by explaining to Eric what a gazebo is. Thus ends the tale of Eric and the dread gazebo. Could have been worse. At least the gazebo wasn't on a grassy knoll. <laughs> it's my favorite. It's my all-time favorite D&D story.